We welcome all of you who are worshiping with us here at First Presbyterian Church, Moxville, and those of you online. Pastor Dana is on vacation, and we will be having a service of carols and lessons. If you signed up to help in worship, make sure to get the 2022 worship calendar. Paper copies can be found downstairs by the back door or in our online newsletter. The men of the church, Presbyterian women, and worship and music team members, this is your reminder that decorations come down next Sunday after worship. Are there any prayer concerns or joys? Then let us worship God. Good morning. Good morning. Let's call to worship. A year comes to a close and a new year awaits. Christmas lights still twinkle, yet the story strives on. We travel into the wilderness and there find something new. We come to worship God, make straight the way of the Lord. In humility and wonder, let us pray the adoration and confession. At the end of the year, O oh God, we come to remember. We remember all your goodness to us. We remember those we loved and lost. We remember acts of kindness and glimpses of your love at work. Remember good times and difficult times, giving thanks that in all times you were present. As we remember, we ask your forgiveness for the times we failed you and failed one another. At this threshold between the old and the new, we ask that you will help us to go with confidence into a new year, knowing that your faithfulness is forever. May the knowledge of your presence in the old and the new comfort and sustain us as we leave behind the old and walk with you into the new life you give us every day. Amen. May we take this chance to take a breath and imagine the world now on this side of Christmas. For Christmas just begun, not ended. Incarnation begun, not completed. The coming of justice begun, not fulfilled. The voice in the wilderness sounding, not silenced. We are in the beginning times, cusp of years, John at the ending and beginning, the prophets of the changing time. The whole nativity story is perhaps more real now as the characters begin to fade into memory, their story less anticipated, just an ordinary couple left to bring up a child in the echo of the promise, made real in the wilderness one. The shepherds are back on the hillside looking after sheep under dark skies. The magi traveling back home another way the innkeeper resting in the quieter routine now that everyone is counted. The sparkle has gone. Might we even forget those living on the edge, the traveling immigrants, the frightened mother? Might we, or might we believe their story, the incarnation, the revelation of John starts now?
scripture reading this morning is taken from Genesis 3, 8 through 15 and 17 through 19. During that day's cool evening breeze, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God in the middle of the gardens of trees. The Lord God called to the man and said, Where are you? The man replied, I heard your sound in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? And the woman said, The snake tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the snake, because you did this, you are the one cursed out of all the farm animals, out of all the wild animals. On your belly you will crawl, and your dust you will eat every day of your life. I will put contempt between you and the woman, between your offsprings and hers. They will strike your head, but you will strike at their heels. The man said, because you listened to to the man, he said, because you listened to your wife's voice and you ate from the tree that I commanded. Don't eat from it, cursed it, the, f the fertile land, because of you. In pain, you will eat from it every day of your life. Weeds and thistles will grow for you, even as you eat the field's plants. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread until you return to the fertile land. Since from it you were taken, you are soil. To the soil you will return. The word of the Lord. Scripture reading is from Genesis 22, 15 to 18. And the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I give my word as the Lord that because you did this and didn't hold back your son, your only son, I will bless you richly and I will give you countless descendants, as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the seashore. They will conquer their enemies' cities all the nations of the earth will be blessed because of your descendants, because you obeyed me. The word of the Lord.
Scripture reading from the book of Isaiah, verses 6 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen him in great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born unto us, a child is given to us, and authority will be his on his shoulder. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be a vast authority of endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. The word of the Lord. The next scripture reading is from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor gives birth. The rest of his kin will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell secure, because he will surely become great throughout the earth. He will become one of peace. When Assyria invades our land and treads down our fortresses, then we will raise up against him seven shepherds and eight human princesses. The word of the war.
scripture reading is from Luke 1, 26 through 35 and 38. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored ones, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. This scripture reading is from Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. The first enrollment occurred when Quinarius governed Sirius, Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. The word of the Lord.
This reading will be from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them, the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what has happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. The word of the Lord. The scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, verse 2, chapters 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen a star in the east and have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled. And everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, Ye Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come come one who governs, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me, so that I may too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star... They were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word of the Lord.
The last reading is John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. And though the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself was not the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people coming into the world. The light was in the world. The world came into being through the light, but the world did not recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of God. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that by being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. who by his birth gathered us all into divine fellowship, fill you with the sweetness of peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace and joy.